the work I'm presenting today is about distributed programming in C++. It is a problem that has been targeted uh, from different angles and with a variety of different uh, approaches. But today I'm talking about a very specific angle that is uh, distributed programming in C++ through the standard uh, C++ STL, the standard template library. We think this is important as if we look at the current support for parallelism in C++, we really see a hole in the support for a high level programming of distributed systems. We can categorize the current support for parallelism in C++ according to at least two dimensions. The first dimension is low level versus high level parallelism. And the second dimension is a shared memory versus distributed memory systems. For instance, you have threads and you have atomic operations targeting low level programming on shared memory. You have sockets and the ongoing networking technical specification for uh, low level programming on distributed systems. Uh, then you have the high level parallelism for shared memory. That is the so-called uh, parallel STL. That is the usual uh, STL um, in C++, meaning uh, the containers, so arrays, unordered map, unordered set, vectors, and um, algorithms over those containers. Uh, so you have max element, count, transform, reduce, all the library of, of algorithms that uh, any C++ programmer is uh, quite comfortable with. Um, and the way in which parallelism is supported is through execution policies. So uh, given an algorithm in plain sequential C++, you got a fully parallel implementation exploiting uh, multi-threading or any other form of uh, shared memory parallelism by just adding an optional parameter to the call uh, to this algorithm. Uh, so what is really missing here is a similar way of exploiting high level uh, parallelism on distributed memory systems. And this work aims at filling exactly this gap. We started by defining and implementing uh, the distributed counterparts of some core concepts from the STL. Uh, everything in the STL is an iterator. When you apply an algorithm to a container, you say apply this algorithm to this container from point A to point B and those points a and B are iterators and the portion of the container included between those iterators is called the range. Uh, so we have defined distributed iterators and ranges. Then you have references, that is what you get when you dereference an iterator. So we defined and implemented distributed references. Uh, then you have some arithmetic over the iterators that in our case, of course, is a, a little bit more complicated as yeah, we had to deal with multiple physical nodes uh, where data are physically uh, partitioned all. One major effort in our work uh, has been to provide a scalable implementation of these concepts. Of course, I don't have the time to go through all the details um, of the implementation here, but I want to stress a couple of points. First of all, uh, for a given data, we have a double view on this data in terms of a distributed and local iterator um, to, to the same point into the same data. Uh, the distributed iterator is what you get when you, um, as a user, when you, for instance, do container.begin. Um, you, you get the, the object you get in return is a distributed iterator. But for the same data, we also have a local view that is a plain STL iterator so that we don't pay any extra cost when, you, when we use this iterator in input to local STL algorithms. Uh, the other thing is uh, a lazy dereferencing for references, and we also do some caching for references so that we don't pay extra costs of uh, remote accesses when we uh, access twice a data from a remote reference. Uh, and we implemented all of these on top of uh, SHAD, that is a library of high performance distributed uh, data structures and distributed tasking that is currently being developed and maintained at, at PNNL. The second part of the story is about distributed algorithms. 
Uh, let me start by recapping briefly the parallel STL for shared memory. Uh, in the upper part of the code example on the right, uh, you see a transform algorithm applied to a whole array, and you introduce parallelism by passing to the call a std execution par uh, parameter, that is uh, the parallel, the shared memory parallel execution policy. Uh, given an algorithm, the policy defines the semantics of the algorithm, both in terms of functional semantics, meaning which output is produced upon a given input, but also the uh, non-functional, the operational semantics. In this case, you are saying, please use some form of shared memory parallelism. Of course, the actual behavior will depend on the specific implementation, but in general term, uh, you are asking uh, for exploiting some form of shared memory parallelism. Uh, in the same way, we introduced two policies for our distributed algorithms. One is the distributed sequential policy uh, that provides the same functional semantics as a plain sequential execution. So given a distributed container, a distributed range, uh, when you apply a, a algorithm with a distributed sequential policy, you get the very same result as a plain sequential execution. And for the operational semantics, this proceeds by splitting the range in multiple portions and going through the portions sequentially, carrying over the result over a portion to the computation over the next portion. This, in some sense, guarantees the functional semantics, the sequential uh, semantics, uh, through the operational semantics, uh, going actually sequentially through the portions. Then we introduce the distributed parallel execution policy uh, that has the same functional semantics as the shared memory uh, parallel execution policy, but this time operationally, uh, it still splits the, the range into multiple portions, but this time it goes um, independently, it applies independently the algorithm over each portion, and then it combines uh, the result, the partial results into a final result. This is the very well-known MapReduce execution pattern from the classical uh, functional programming uh, domain. Uh, finally, we introduced some optimizations uh, for algorithms that access more than one range. For instance, the transform uh, access one range in input, uh, the a.begin, a.end in, in the example, uh, but also a output range. And there is no guarantee that the data are in a sense collocated so that you can uh, do the assignments, both the read and the write parts of the assignments or, or, or insertions uh, without leaving the node in your multi-node execution scenario. So we introduce two forms of um, uh, of optimizations. One is buffered asynchronous remote memory uh, accesses, and the other one is transactional remote assignments. And both uh, are trying to limit in the costs of, of um, single item uh, remote uh, accesses, uh, doing some grouping and also exploiting some pipelining to reduce, to hide the cost, the latency uh, for remote accesses. I will conclude my presentation with a quick look to some experimental results. Uh, here we are seeing how uh, on single range algorithms, our uh, implementation of the distributed parallel uh, policies scales pretty linearly, at least up to 16 uh, sockets. Um, we have some super linearity that's probably due to a, a superior performance of the uh, shared implementation of, of local sets over the implementation that we found on the standard library on the execution systems, but basically we are uh, showing uh, linear scaling here. The story is a bit more complicated for multi-range algorithms, but here I want at least to remark how our optimizations guarantee um, almost linear scaling, even on the very worst case of uh, all remote accesses on, for the unordered set, so for associative containers, uh, but also for the unaligned case, so all remote accesses for contiguous containers, the array in this case, we still have some scaling, even if, of course, we pay some latency due to the unavoidable uh, 
uh, remote accesses that we are paying uh, versus the, the all local accesses. Of course, I would have a ton more things to say, but I don't have time to go through them. Uh, for instance, we have interesting results on a real world application. So please ask me any questions you, you might have. Thank you.